How many people with borderline that you treat do you see sort of some heavy duty narcissism in them? And like the borderline people that we see on our channel and stuff, they're totally fine identifying as borderline. Why are they, they're so vehemently like, not me, the narcissism, you, but not me. What do you see and how do you deal with that? You mean the refusal to recognize that yeah. this is an aspect of their... Yeah, and you or know, do you sneak it in? Well, I, I think that, you know, in TFP land, we often believe in giving the patient their diagnosis. I think that with borderline, some individuals who have been misdiagnosed with depression, anxiety, substance abuse, et cetera, et cetera, it's a relief to get the BPD diagnosis. Suddenly it all makes sense. It's like turning the kaleidoscope and seeing that all these different facets are part of a disorder that they've had and they've treated, you know, piecemeal, one thing and another thing. And so it's often a relief. I think for some people, I mean, there's still a lot of stigma. That hasn't happened yet for narcissistic personality disorder. People think that it's a pejorative. Well, I would say, (laughs) interestingly enough, there's two different camps of patients. One come in telling you that they know that they have NPD or they're a narcissist and their wife has told them that and a former therapist has told them that and they've looked it up on the internet and they know that that's what they are and so what, you know? They wear it like a badge of honor. But they don't really understand what that means and so that's the first thing I ask them. Well, what does that mean to you? And how does that show up in your life and your functioning and your relationships? That's what we're gonna discover. And then once you've done that and they've been in treatment for a while, they have a very different sense of what that means. Do you see what I'm saying? The other group, really aren't ready to hear that. And so you have to really work with them, going from vanity to grandiosity. You have to begin to introduce them. Often a way to do that is to say, well, you know, I think what's going on here is really a personality disorder, and that is maladaptive characteristic ways of experiencing yourself and other people. And there may be some narcissistic elements and there may be some schizoid elements, you know, to introduce it gradually to the person as a personality disorder. And with some other patients, I don't even do that. You know, I just wait. But along the way, I think it does help as you're in the working through process to begin to talk about that. And sometimes patients will just ask you spontaneously. So, you know, what do you think my diagnosis is? And then it's, you know, it's, it's not so difficult. Um, I am not somebody who gives them the diagnosis right away if I don't think they're ready to hear it. But by the time patients, you know, get to you, they often have been told by somebody that they have NPD or been called narcissistic. I mean, it's very rare for that not to be a word that gets bandied around in the initial stages. Unfortunately, because it's used so often to refer to our president, you see, I think that's given it a certain kind of pejorative um, cast. They don't want the same diagnosis. But what people don't understand is what a wide range of presentations this is. And also, I think it's a mistake to think about world leaders, nefarious world leaders, only in terms of their pathology. Because there have been many presidents who have had personality disorders, depression, substance abuse issues, and they still have been able to govern very responsibly.